Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, the second lecture on Ganitasara Sangraha of Mahavira, the outline is something like this. First, I will be discussing this linear indeterminate equation or Vallikara Kuttakara as it is called here. Then, two and more simultaneous indeterminate equations, and there are other kinds of indeterminate equations. Then, what is known as Vichitra Kuttakara, truthful and untruthful statements. Then, sums of progressions of various types. Variable velocity, this is broad variable velocity problem, this is broadly the outline of this lecture. So, this is a linear indeterminate equation is of the following form. Suppose you are given is equal to y, b y, this what it is, sorry, to use for consistency. So, given this one equation in two unknowns x and y, so a and b are integers and you have to find integral solution for this, right. If you, if it is, you know, if x is any real number, then it can always be solved and y can be correspondingly, you know, will have a certain value. But here it is specified that x and y are integers. So, only certain kind of certain integers will satisfy this equation. It will not be unique, the solution will not be unique, but there will be a set of solutions for this equation with integral values for x and y. So, that is the linear indeterminate equation. So, it is called Kuttaka in uh, Indian mathematics and astronomy text. It has been discussed by Aryabhatta himself first in Aryabhatiya uh, and then um, Brahmagupta discusses it in his uh, Brahmasputta Siddhanta and now Mahavira also he has discussed this. So, I will give how you know Mahavira has uh, handled this and uh, the examples he has given ok that will be of interest. So, now Kuttaka was so considered so important in Indian mathematical tradition that in fact algebra was called Kuttaka. The uh, chapter of on algebra in Brahma Gupta's Brahmasputta Siddhanta is called Kuttaka. So, that is the importance that was given to this and it has various applications. So, first I will discuss how it is solved. As I told you, he is not the first to solve, Aryabhata and uh, Brahmagupta also have given the way to solve it. What Mahavira, how he has described the solution is Chitva Chedena Rashim Prathama Phalam Apokhyam Aptam Anyonya bhaktam sthapya urdvadha yatodho matriguna mayuja alpe avashiste dhanaranam chitvadha so parigno pariyuta harabhaga adhikagrasya haram chitva chedena sagrantara phalam adhikagranvitam haraghatam. So, divide the given group number, I will read it and of course one will understand only when you describe it in the uh, with using the notations. So, divide the given group number by the given divisor, discard the first quotient, then put down one below the other various quotients obtained by the successive division of the various resulting divisions by the various resulting remainders again. Put down below this the optionally chosen number, which with the last remainder, least remainder in the odd position of order in the above mentioned process of successive regions is to be multiplied and then put down below this again this product increased or decreased as the case may be by the given known number and divided by the last divisor in the above mentioned process of successive division. Thus, the vallika or creeper like chain of figures is obtained that is why it is called vallikara kuttakara. In this the sum is obtained by adding the lower most number in the chain to the product obtained by the multiplying the number above it with a number immediately above this upper number. This process of addition being in the same way continued till the whole chain is exhausted, 
this sum is to be divided by the originally given divisor the remainder in this loss division becomes the multiplier x this at last is this is the solution he is describing with with the originally given group number is to be multiplied for the purpose of arriving at the quantity which is to be divided or distributed in the manner indicated in the problem i mean whatever is given in the brackets you know that is not there in the verse itself but uh, for completion of the you know many things would have been implied in this works so <coughs> the translation is including that so what is done is the following it is much easier done than said so you are solving this bx plus b is equal to ay okay so now you are using essentially to use a similar procedure procedure which is similar to what you do for finding the highest common factor between a and b of our theorem so bx plus b is equal to ay so you do this you know mutual division or the so called euclidean algorithm so then a b this thing you know quotient is q1 then the remainder is r1 so now divide a by this remainder r1 then you get the quotient q2 and the remainder r2 then again r1 you take here and divide r1 by r2 quotient is q3 and remainder is r3 and so on till you get a small number here okay the important thing is you know that uh, this uh, kuttaga linear indeterminate equation is much more than euclidean algorithm something more is involved here it is stopped there you know but uh, much more is required to get the solution of the uh, problem which was posed here so here is he stopped at the nth remainder r5 which is least it doesn't the whereas doesn't specify it can be in fact you can go on till you go get one so in the above case n is equal to 5 okay i have to put it there like that now discard the first quotient q1 okay first quotient q1 discard the other quotient q2 q3 q4 q5 so that you write as a only that is a column one below the other and we should choose a number p such that p r 5 plus r minus b is divisible by r 4 here plus is chosen when n is odd and minus is chosen when n is even the number p is written below the column starting with q2 etc and ending with q1 and below this the quotient pr5 plus b by r4 is equal to q okay so you are going on right so the sequence of coefficients we write it like this q2 q3 etc qn of course the first q quotient q1 is not considered so now after q1 you write the number p such that p multiplied by the last remainder and added to b is divisible by the previous remainder that is in what we have shown p r5 plus b is divisible by r4 and below that you write the quotient q so now in the next step you delete this so then we do what we do is we take this into this plus this qn into p plus q so we write it here below this we write p and the other things are the same above it so in the next step what we do is this is multiplied by this and then this is added so that will be the this qn p plus q so this is deleted and the upper entities are the same so you go on like this till only two quantities remain so that you write as t1 t2 so if you give some example then it will be clear okay it actually pretty simple so we have given you know power of in the course we have given you know uh, this uh, procedure and almost everybody would be able to solve or able to solve it so just have to 
understand the procedure, you just write it down one, then you will know. So, solve the equation 63 x plus y is equal to 23 y. So, you have to solve this equation for integral x and y, right. So, you do this uh, mutual division 63, you know, divided by 23, quotient is 2, remainder is 17, then 23 is divided by 17. So, 1, 6, 6, 17, 2. So, like this 1. In fact, we could have stopped here, but I want this uh, number of, you know, the total number of quotients to be odd. Because then only you will have to be adding, you know, you do not have to bother about adding and subtracting. You can always, you know, you could have stopped here, but I am just, there nothing prevents you from doing this also. So, I said that, you know, the number of total number of quotients is odd, that is why I am doing, okay. Then, the, the R5 is 1, here R5 is 1 and R4 is 1, okay. So, then you see, we have to choose a number p such so that we had got that 1, 2, 1, 4, right? 1, 2, 1, 4 you had got because the first quotient 2 that you have to leave, the all the other quotients you have to take, 1, 2, 1, 4 you have got. Then we have to choose a number p such so that when multiplied by the last remainder 1 and added to 7 it is divisible by the last divisor 1, okay. So, here both the last remainder is 1, the last divisor 1 is also 1, right. So, we have to choose such that, that you know that is uh, uh, R 5 P plus B is divisible by R 4. Here both R 4 and R 5 are equal to 1, B is 7. So, we can take P is equal to 1, okay. So, that is what you have written below these quotients, you know from the list the first is removed as I told you. So, 1, 2, 1, 4 then this P, then quotient you see R 5 P plus B divided by R 4, so that is 8, so that quotient you write. So, now you know this into this plus this 12, this is 1 again, so this is removed. So, then next this into this plus this. So, 1, 2, 13, 12, this is removed. So, now next this into this plus this. So, 38, 30, 1, 13, this thing. And then last is 51, you know, this into this plus this. So, 51, 38. So, you have got two entries. So, now what you have to do is this itself actually is a solution, but um, to get the least solution, you note that 51 is 23, that is you divide 51 by this. Uh, this 23 that is uh, this b x plus b sorry, b is equal to a y. So, you divide by this. So, then 2 is the quotient 5 is the remainder, remainder is 5. So, that remainder is the lowest value for x which satisfies this equation x is equal to 5 and y is 63 into 5 plus 7 by 23 this 322 by 23 that is 14. So, these are the lowest solutions and the general solutions are clearly 5 plus 23 t and y is equal to 14 plus 63 t where t is an arbitrary integer, you know, because what we are solving is see 63 x plus 7 is equal to 23 y. Suppose x 0 is a solution x 0 y 0, then if you take x 0 plus you know for any integral multiple of 23, 23 m and uh, y 1 is equal to y 0 plus 63 m, then clearly that also will satisfy, you know because the 63 into 23 into m will come here and it will come here, they will cancel and if this satisfy this equation, this also will satisfy the equation. So, you will get a into in fact you have an infinite number of solutions because m can go from in fact if you can in, uh, have negative numbers also then it will be really it will go from minus infinity to plus infinity various integrals not all the integers but you know this it will be of this form ok. okay. Yeah. In fact, rationale so one can I will just give a brief why does it work like this. 
So, what you are doing is you know b x plus b by a. So, that is a what you have to solve right b x plus b capital b x plus b divided by capital A that is y an integer that is what you have to get. So, which I write as q 1 x plus p 1. Okay. So, from this one can see that p 1 is b minus a q 1 x plus b divided by a. So, now b minus a q 1 is the remi first reminder okay. when d b is divided by capital P is divided by capital A r 1 is the first reminder. So, x is equal to a p 1 minus b divided by r 1. So, now a is actually again when a is uh, divided by r 1 the remainder is uh, r 2 and the quotient is q 2. So, a can be written like this. So, x is q 2 p 1 plus p 2 where p 2 is this. So, again from this one can write p 1 is equal to r 1 p 2 plus b by r 2 and again r 1 you know <coughs> when it is divided by r 2 the quotient is q 3 and the remainder is r 3. So, p 1 you can write like this and so on you see. So, you get this kinds of equations you can have a closer look later. Now, you have to at some stage you are you know seeing that you are you know choosing a number let us say the we stop suppose we stop at the fifth remainder r 5 and we call p 4 as p. So, the procedure which was you know given was that you know this r 5 p 4 plus b by r 4 that must be an integer you call it p 5. So, it is equal to this. So, here we are choosing p is equal to p 4 such that this is divisible by r 4. So, you get x is equal to q 2 p 1 plus p 2 p 1 is equal to q 3 p 2 etcetera like this where we have chosen p such that this is equal to integer. So, that is how you get the this thing you know. So, you have to analyze it a little bit you know but nothing more than you know linear equation. So, this will give the justification of the procedure. Okay. So, this is this. So, what we have obtained is x is equal to q 2 p 1 plus p 2 p uh, through this only it has been constructed such that you know this is automatically in the integer b x plus b capital A by A is equal to y is equal to q 1 x plus p 1 is an integer. Now, let the remainder of x when divided by A be x 0. So, then x is equal to x 0 plus t A. So, clearly one can see that x 0 is the lowest solution and uh, the general solution is x 0 plus t a for x and similarly y 0 whatever you get b x 0 plus b by capital A is y 0 then y 0 plus t b is the general solution for y. Okay. Okay. So, now the one equation is uh, so I get the point right I mean because see some equations you may be able to solve by inspection. Okay. Suppose you want to solve this x minus 5 by 8 is an integer by inspection one can see that any integer you see 5 plus 8 will solve this or 5 plus some integral multiple of 8 will solve this you know by inspection one can see. But all the problems can you solve this no by inspection it is not easy. So, that is what is given in the procedure which will work for all integers A and capital A and capital B. So, now the second part of Mahavira's procedure for Kuttaka is for the problem such that find x such that let us say b 1 x plus small b 1 by capital A 1 is an integer b 2 x plus b 2 by a 2 is an integer like b 3 x plus b 3 a by a 3 is an integer so on you, see, you can go on like that. So, simultaneously I have to solve this. Okay. So, b 1 x capital b 1 x plus small b 1 is equal to capital A 1 into y 1 capital b 2 x plus b 2 is equal to a to like, a to like that you know. So, how do we solve this in fact this also has been discussed by Mahavira. Solve this first equation we have already given the procedure that the lowest value of x be s 1 and we solve this also the lowest solution for this is let us say is s 2. When both of them are to be satisfied see because the lowest value of this is s 1 the no general value is this d a 1 plus s 1 where d is an integer. Similarly, the general solution of this is k a 2 plus s 2 where k is an integer. So, from this when you get s 1 minus s 2 
is equal to ka2 minus ga1 that is a1 d plus s1 minus s2 by a2 is equal to k. So, now it is the one more kutaka you have to solve for a d you are finding you know d and k such that both the equations are satisfied right. So, you have to solve for d and k such that this you know integral value such that this equation is satisfied ok. Indeterminate equation where the values of d and k are unknown. So, we find the lowest possible integral value of d then d a 1 plus s 1 is the lowest value of x such that this is an integer similarly this is an integer. Let the least value be t 1, let the next value of x which will satisfy this let us be t 2, then t 2 must be t 1 plus n a 1 because the first equation if you take the lowest then if you multiply multiple of a 1 that will be a solution. Similarly, for the second equation the lowest is t 1 the common solution we have got a multiple of a 2 must be a solution and both the equations have to be satisfied when you have to solve both the equations. So, you get you know from these two equations you get a 1 by a 2 is equal to m by n. So, now let a 1 a 2 capital A 1 capital A 2 let p be the highest common factor then a 1 is equal to m p a 2 is equal to n p. So, we can write it like this. So, t 1 plus a 1 a 2 by p is equal to t 2 is this. So, that will satisfy both the equations. So, you got the point t 1 is the lowest solution which will satisfy both the equations and the next value is you know see both somehow both a 1 and a 2 are involved and actually the next integral value is t 1 plus a 1 a 2 by p that is the next higher value. And if you want to go uh, solve the third equation, so then <coughs> you have to solve this you have to this also has to be satisfied this also has to be an integer. So, the solution of this is v is c 3 s 3 plus c a 3 let us say. Now, the solution of the previous two equations will be like this we saw that that is the lowest is this and the general is this ok where r is an integer. So, we have to essentially again we have to solve this kutaka c a 3 plus s 3 minus t 1 by L is equal to R. So, that is what you have to do, but of course, third one uh, three equations when the Sara Sangra does not give in detail, but uh, the two equations he does discuss in detail in his work and uh, I have already described what it is. So, only if you work out some problems you will be able to understand it is fairly simple but because so much is said you know one gets may be rattled. So, the problem is in the forest 37 heaps of wood apples were seen by the travellers after 17 fruits were removed there from there from the remainder was equally divided among 79 persons so as to leave no remainders what is the share obtained by each ok. So, 37 heaps were there ok. So, then 17 were removed from that ok 30, 37 x. So, suppose the number in each heap is x. So, 37 x 17 were removed in from that. So, that could be divided among 79 people 37 x minus 17 by 79. So, that is an integer. So, this is a Kutaka equation of course, this is negative see. So, this b could be negative also. So, you have to use this uh, procedure which I said. So, the next also is a Dashta Amra Rashi Mapahaya Cha Sapta Paschad Bhakteshta Bhi Punarapi Pravihaya Tasmat Srini Trayoda Shabhi Uddile Uddile Uddalite Vishuddha Pantair Vane Ganakame Katha Kathayaika Rashim. When after seeing a group of mangoes in the forest and removing seven fruits therefrom, it was divided equally among 8 of the travellers and when again after removing 3 fruits that heap was divided equally among 13 of them it left no remainder in both the cases. Oh mathematician tell me the numerical measure of this group. So, when you measure if you remove from that heap if you remove 7 so then 
it is divisible by 8 because it is distributed among 8 people. So, x minus y x minus 7 by 8 is y 1 then x minus 3 by 13 is similarly when you remove 3 from them it could be distributed among 13. So, these are the two equations we have to solve. So, one can do that. So, as I told you always Mahavira will have a lot of problems for each kind of uh, uh, this thing you know a, a topic that he discusses. So, he will give examples many also many um, equations also involving many, many more equations for instance 3 equations involving 3 linear indeterminate equations he has given this uh, following problem. Drushta jambu, jambu phalanam pati patika janai ratayas tatra rashi dau tegrauto Navanam Taya Iti Punareka Dashanam Vibhaktaha Panchagraste Yatinam Chaturadika Taraha Panchate Saptakanam Kutta Karartha Vinme Kathaya Ganaka Sachintya Rashi Pramanam Sanchintya Rashi Pramanam The traveller saw on the way certain equal heaps of jambu fruits. So, two heaps were equally divided among nine ascetics and left three fruits. Okay. So, after distributing them 3 was the remainder. Again 3 hoops were heaps were similarly divided among 11 persons and the remainder was 5. 5 again were heaps were similarly divided among 7 and there are 4 more fruits left. So, clearly essentially what you have to do is 2 x plus 3 so, among the 2 heaps you know after it was divided among 9 3 was remainder 2 x plus 3 by 9 is equal to y 1. 3x plus 5 by 11 is equal to y2, 5x plus 4 by 7 is equal to y3. So, the 3 indeterminate equations you have to solve and uh, you can solve it you know you just have to look at the procedure a little more in detail and uh, you will be able to arrive at it. So, this is one kind of linear indeterminate equation and of course, that is one of the most important, but uh, Mahavira considers several kinds of indeterminate equations which are of interest. So, one of them another of them apart from this Kuttakara is Vallikara uh, Kuttakara is the following thing following problem he considers. For instance, suppose let m 1, m 2, m 1 be the numbers of n kinds of gems that are n persons each of them has some different kind of gem okay, some are diamond, some are emerald things like that and let x 1, x 2 be the value of the single gem in each variety let each of them give g gems each to others. What is the value of each gem if the wealth of all the persons become equal after the exchange? Okay. So, that is each of them will have some gems particular kinds of gems with a particular value. Okay. So, now uh, there will be some exchange program. Okay. So, the, for instance uh, the eighth person will have m i gems. So, each of the other persons n i minus 1 persons he will give g gems of his own variety. Okay. So, similar other I will he will receive also from each of the others he will achieve g gems. Okay. So, finally, <coughs> he will have m i minus m i minus n i minus 1 g gems of eighth kind his own kind and g gems of each of the other kinds. So, the net worth of each person is stated to be the same. Okay. So, what you get is the his worth you know, whatever the number uh, the uh, gems he has the value of that will be clearly he received g gems from each of the others. So, x 2 g plus x 3 g plus etcetera x n g and his own whatever he has left with his own gems you know that is m 1 minus n 1 minus 1 into g. So, this and the other person also similarly will have this kinds of a the value of the gems will be like this. So, you will have x 1 into m 1 minus n g is equal to x 2 is equal to m 2 minus n g is equal to so on. So, the general integral solution will be x 1 is equal to capital M by m 1 minus obviously, this x 1, x 2, etcetera they are all inversely proportional to these things. So, you choose m you know and divided by m i minus n g that will be x i. So, in fact, Mahavira chooses m is equal to this m 1 minus n g into this kind of a thing. So, that x 1 is 
m1 minus ng etc mn minus ng in which this is excluded okay in fact you can take a multiple of that also you know multiply all of them it is by the some number that also will be a solution okay because what is said is that the wealth of each person will be the same okay so that may be any value so there is some arbitrariness this in this but the in the, the ratios are what you can actually determine from this so he has given the example prathamasya chakra nila ha shodasha dasha barakata vitiyasya vajja vajra srutiya purushasya ashto dvau tatra datvaiva teshvai kaikonyabhyam samaghanatam yantite trayah purushah tat chakra nila marakata vajranam kim vida ardah okay so the first man has the 16 azur blue gems chakra nila okay the second has marakata 10 emeralds okay the third has eight diamonds each among them gives to each of the others two gems of the kind owned by himself and then all the three men come to be possessed of equal ban so what are the values of this so you can find that so here one is azure blue two is emerald three is diamond so the number of persons is n is equal to 3 and m1 earlier the first person had 16 second as 10 third third as 8 so g is equal to 2 here the exchange each of them is giving two of his own kind to the others g is equal to 2 so ng is equal to 6 so you can find this m1 minus ng in the way he has described the solution m1 minus ng is equal to you can find these things so then x1 is you know this into this so that is 8 x2 is this into this so that is 20 and uh, x3 is this into this so the algorithm is given here you see for solving this so similarly consider what is the suvarna kutti kara because these all see all these things now you see everybody uh, baskara will talk about it in uh, um, the narayana pandita will talk about this these all be, but they will make it slightly more and more slightly difficult problems in that category kind of thing so that is how indian mathematics moves similarly suvarna kutti kara you know so you have gold of various purities you know you can say you can say well, what we now now call it is you know 24 carat 22 carat like that so that the measure of very uh, purity is called varna so if weights wi of varna vi are mixed and if there is no loss in weight so then total weight of the mixture is this and uh, suppose the varna of the mixture is this okay so, so various varnas are mixed so what is the varna of the mixture so clearly so that will be the total amount of the you know pure gold will be same in both if there is no loss so then this is the equation so varna of the mixture will be this and of course they will also consider some problems where you know, some amount will be lost and all that the weight will not be you know the some of the earlier weights so that will be slightly different and then there are some interesting problem vichitra kutti kara truthful and untruth uh, full statement that also is you know various people uh, after mahavira onward they talk about that so the there are n men a lady likes m of them to each of them she makes a statement i like you only but that statement is considered as you know uh, n statements i mean she is making one statement but the implicitly it is assumed that she is making n minus one statement you know i don't like uh, that person i don't like i don't like i don't like i don't like so each of them she is making this suppose if she actually likes m of them then how many truthful statements she has made and how many untruthful statements so a total number of statements is n squared but each of them she is making n statements you know i like you i don't like this 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 of course she might not say it but it is implicit similarly second person also she will say i like you and this and what actually she likes she likes by m of them okay so then how to solve this so here he has given the solution purusha saikeshta guna jigunesh tona bhavanti asatyani purusha kruti stai runa satyani bhavanti vachanani the number of men multiplied by the number of those liked among them as increased by 1 and then diminished by twice the number of men liked Gives rise to the number of two untruthful statements. 
this subtracted from the square of the total number of men becomes the number of statements that are truthful. Okay. So, total number of statements is n squared of them m are like see so m suppose you consider the subset of m people with whom the lady actually likes when each of the m number of persons is told you alone are liked the number of untruthful statements in each case is m minus 1 okay because she says i like you which is true then i don't like this you know m minus 1 others which is not true and but she also saying i don't like the, those others in the other subset which is true okay so the untruthful statement is m into m minus 1 similarly the same statement is made to each of the n minus m persons the subset of uh, unliked uh, entities this, they, so for them the untruthful statement to each of them is m plus 1 because to that individual she is saying i like you but actually she doesn't like him so that is one untruthful statement then she is saying you know i don't like this subset of these others which is not true she likes them so m each of them so that is <laughs> untruthful and then she says you know others in this other subset you know the, the disliked uh, entities she says i don't like them which is true <laughs> so you have to carefully understand so the total number of untruthful statements in n minus m persons is n minus m into m plus 1 so the total number of untruthful statements is so finally so you have to add these things m into m minus 1 plus this so untruthful statement asatyani n into m plus 1 minus 2m so total number of statements is equal to n squared so n squared minus okay so this is the kind of thing so i am sure you know in the present context also maybe we have to devise some algorithms you know so many <laughs> truthful and untruthful statements are made in the public there must be a way of analyzing it so she has given a problem there are five men among them three are like in fact like by a woman she says separately to each of them i like you alone then how many of her statements are true ones so n so here n is equal to 5 m is equal to 3 so the total number of untruthful statement is 14 the total number of uh, statements is 25 because this thing is there so total number of truthful statement is 11 and the total number of untruthful is 14 so that is the thing 14 then okay so now <coughs> comes a very important uh, uh, verse in uh, mahavira's uh, ganita sara sangraha so he now gives the uh, expression for the combination of r out of n objects if n objects are there then what is the combination of r out of n objects yekad ye kotaratah padam urdvardayatah kramot kramashah stapya pratilomagnam pratilomagnena bhajitam saram so beginning with 1 and increasing by 1 let the numbers going up to the given number of things be written down in regular order and in the inverse order respectively in the upper and lower horizontal row if the product of 1 2 3 more etc of the numbers in the upper row taken from right to left be divided by the corresponding um, product of 1 2 3 etc in the lower order also taken from right to left the quantity required in each case is the result okay so essentially he is i mean of course he is taking 1 to n so he is leaving out starting from n but it is equivalent to this upper row is n into n minus 1 into this divided by 1 into 2 into r so factorial n by factorial n minus 1 into factorial r so this is the i mean what is given is this essentially you take the upper row like this and lower row this see already combinatorics you know this combination were discussed by professor shinivas in this uh, context of chandras and uh, uh, master Vrutas and so on see but here it is it was not, not the solution was not given in this form okay so it is in a different form so in the particular this particular form it is given <coughs> for the first time perhaps here so there is a very but uh, strangely he does not discuss too many problems and you know exercises related to that he only gives some three problems 
you know one of the problems he gets is x in the 6 plus in the 6 you know taste. So, 6. So, then by mixing them then how many uh, this thing you will get a okay, taste kind of a thing. So, that is as you know that is the total is 2 to the power of 6 minus 1. Then he talks about you know so there are some flowers okay Ashoka, Champaka, Nilotpala and uh, Ketaki okay four kinds of flowers. So, how many kinds of garlands you can make? So, that is a simple thing. So, let us say some 2, 3 only he will discuss, but it is a you know he really laid the foundation for this combinatorics in a, in a of course, I mean apart from what was actually done earlier in uh, Chandra's uh, Shastra books and later of course, um, Bhaskar Acharya too you know, carries forward this to a quite a bit and then Narayana Pandita carries forward to a very great extent you know this combinatorics. So, that will be discussed later. So, this is an important thing which is there in the text. So, then he is uh, as I told you there are various kinds of linear indeterminate equations are uh, there and uh, Kuttakas was one of them and some other things also we uh, discussed. So, there is one more interesting problem which he discusses. Suppose there are n merchants each having some money already they find a purse the ith person says if I procure a fraction a i of the amount in the purse, the net amount of with me would be m times the sum of the amount that other merchants have. What is the amount that each of the merchant has and what is the amount in the purse? So, so essentially, so that is called you know portalakam the purse. So, he has given the, the uh, this thing solution here. So, I will uh, keep this as there will be not too much. Uh, time. So, we said the problem is the following you see. So, that is suppose some amount of money is found capital P. So, the first person say that I have got this amount x 1. Suppose I get a fraction a 1 of this purse amount. Okay. So, then my total amount will be m times the whatever many that the others have just now. So, this is this similarly P a 2 plus x 2 is this etcetera. So, n equations in n plus 1 unknown quantities. So, the solution will be given like this. The solution is given in this form x is equal to m into b 1 plus b etcetera minus this kind of a thing. So, and the purse is this you can check this you know it is a matter of small details only, but uh, you should realize that it is an indeterminate equation because essentially see these are the equations right these are the there are n equations in n plus 1 unknowns x 1 x 2 etcetera x n they are the unknowns and the amount of money in the purse p that is also unknown. So, the n equations for n plus 1 quantities. So, and you can quickly see that you know if the solution is you know suppose one solution is x 1 x 2 x n and p then another solution if you multiply this by any quantity any number that also will be a solution because if you multiply this equation you see suppose instead of p you put alpha p instead of x 1 you put alpha x 1 if you uh, uh, instead of x 2 you put alpha x 2 then the same will be satisfied right so, just multiplying all the equations by alpha on both left hand side and right side. So, the actually the solution is up to some um, arbitrary constant you can say that yeah. the ratios are given. So, that is what is interesting. If I once if you try to solve these problems you know to get some integral solution then you will know you know he is a very nicely he has chosen. So, he has stated this. So, I have given some uh, uh, these things also some example also 5 merchants have a purse of money they said one after the another that by obtaining 1 by 6, 1 by 7, 1 by 9, 1 by 8 and 1 by 10 respectively of the contents of the purse. They would each become with what he had on hand 3 times as wealthy as all the remaining others with what they had on hand together. O oh, mathematician tell me quickly what money they had on hand and what the value of the money in the purse was. So, here the solution this thing is the fractions are this and you can take the LCM will be this. So, the solution will be given here. 
and the total number the purse is this, this the amount okay. So, then he talks about some other problems problem of arrows okay I will skip this. Earth printing progression as I told you again some advances are made you know a little more complicated things are done you see. See this is the arithmetic progression you know I mean already it has been hammered that this is the you know sum by Aryabhata, Brahmagupta etcetera. So, this is the solution. So, now you take the sums of the squares each number is a arithmetic progression you take the sums of the terms in an arithmetic progression. So, then he gives this as the result you can see that one has to use these things sum of the first 10 integers sum of the squares of the first 10 integers then you get the result. And cube also he will as that this already was then by Aryabhata Brahmagupta a cube plus a plus b whole cube etcetera. So, then so that is you take our arithmetic series. So, then take the cube of each of them the sum of that will be equal to this we can check that I think you should try this as an exercise. Then he also now goes to a arithmetic progression in which each term is again a sum of an arithmetic pro, uh, series ok. So, the series is 1 plus etcetera up to a and next term is 1 plus etcetera up to b and the last term is 1 plus etcetera n minus 1 b a, a plus n minus 1 b. So, this is the thing. So, each term of the sum of series each term is sum of a series in arithmetic progression the sum can be in fact this is also a good exercise from whatever you know you do not need anything except what has been done earlier you know on this you know sum of sum and sum of sums and all that. So, whatever result you had got earlier that you will use. One plus is up to a and then this will go up to a plus b. So, there are many more terms here in the second this thing term yeah suppose a is 20 b is 30. So, the 10 more terms are there in the second in this thing you know each is a sum actually each term you know each in the series is a sum by itself yeah. So, similarly this uh, sum of sums and all that some combinations is given then he has given some more problems you know various things you know suppose you had a a r etcetera. So, then suppose you have a series geometric some series like this a first term is a second term is a r plus or minus m. So, it is not just it is neither geometric nor arithmetic. So, it is you are multiplying by some quantity and then adding or subtracting something then this into r plus or minus m. So, those kinds of things are also considered and one can see that it will be one can you know you can uh, you can find the sum ok. You just have to see these slides at some leisure then you know you will get this. And then lastly I will discuss the variable velocity problem somewhat you know related to a physics kind of problem. So, the rule for arriving at the common limits of time when one who is moving with successive velocities represent, uh, representable as the terms in the arithmetic progression. So, that is velocity is increasing by a fixed amount after each unit of time. So, that is some kind of a constant acceleration and another moving with a constant velocity. So, it is Dhruvagati Radhi Vihinas Chayadala Bhaktas Rupakaha Kalaha. The unchanging velocity is diminished by the first term of the velocity in series in arithmetical progression and is then divided by half of the common difference on adding 1 to the resulting quantity the required time this thing is arrived at. So, what is the problem? The problem is the following you see see these are you know two persons one is moving with a constant velocity v constant speed the second is accelerating. So, when he goes from here to here the velocity is u then here u plus a ok then here u plus 2 a etcetera. So, you acquire some more velocity at each step. So, that is called acceleration or constant acceleration right. So, then clearly what is the time you know average velocity must be the same you see if they have to meet 
the average velocity when they meet must be the same you see they should have traveled the same distance okay so time is the same so the average velocity should have been the same so then the average velocity is the first person in this u plus u the arithmetic series the u plus a into t minus 1 by 2 the second person of course is a constant velocity average is the his own constant velocity so v so t is v minus u divided by a by 2 plus 1 So that is what he is saying. So incidentally, distance travelled by each is v into t. You see, so v into t, and this is equal to u t plus half a into t into t minus one. The distance, you know, I am sure it reminds you of you know this formula. One's constant acceleration. A body is constant acceleration. In school, what you learn is that you know the distance travelled is u t plus half a t squared. That is essentially given here. of course he is discreetly accelerating you know at discrete steps so that is why you have t into you will not get the exact thing t into t minus 1 you are getting but in the limit when t is large okay and you know said that this uh, product is uh, finite so then you will get actually that formula so this is a kind of a problem that you know and what is interesting is this is the algorithm which is given you see this is the formula is there okay and it is given in so that is a the constant question everybody asks you know, how did they you know or did they write equations in the shloka itself will give dhruvagati radhi vihina stayadala bhakta sarupakah kalah sarupakah is add one kind of a thing okay add one so then you take the difference between them and divide by the this uh, chaya is the difference you know in the arithmetic series so divide by the the difference by 2 then that is the time so that is how they express it so then he also considers two accelerating travelers and all that and um, he considers negative acceleration also you know positive negative some one can be positive one can be negative because he is somewhat comfortable with positive and negative things right having formulated it in the beginning so he ought to be comfortable so he gives some uh, problems related to negative acceleration also finally he will give some i mean not finally i am saying um another important thing n syllables how many lagu guru and all that you know what is the total number of mes this has been you know discussed so many times i don't have to say that so the total answer is 2 to the power of n and uh, the way to compute 2 to the power of n that also has been hammered so that is also put here so i think i will stop here so these are the kinds of things that we uh, discussed so yes cuz discuss so many things but some things i am you know just uh, projecting you know for uh, uh, whatever is mo most important so some more things i will discuss in the last lecture of mahavir the references are given here Yeah, the, the, the true part that Vichitra Kutta Kara he calls it, you know, true and false statements. Yeah, he seems to be the first person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This particular kind of problem, yes, is the first one. So later everybody discusses this kind of thing. Yeah, yes. He does not know earlier. I don't. Uh, I don't think. Say that the gemstone problem. Yeah. It looks to me is a. It's a rearrangement problem. Yeah, yeah, rearrangement problem. It's a rearrangement problem because it's a closed universe. Yeah, yeah. In which the total value remains the same. Yeah, yeah. But it's a very complex. It's like a. Rubik's cube, but this one is a very complicated one because each gem has a value. Each gem has a value. And, and every gem is distinguishable, and you can see they are distinguished, and they cannot be broken down. So you can't equalize by breaking them down because they're bunches of value. So I just thought it, it's a fantastic. Uh, yeah, but of course, it's a simple problem of you know after distributing, you know what is the value? You see that the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. You How stop you there. Like you can go, you know, proceed with that, or you know, to consider you know more complex problems, you know. Related to this, yes. One more thing I wanted to ask. So, 
also that uh, indeterminate multiple equations which you had yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere along the way. Yeah. That, uh, you know, is that something that lends itself to a matrix uh, type solution, matrices and determinants? I don't know. I mean, of course, of maybe now it can be formulated now, but they don't didn't talk about matrix. Yeah, now it will be formulated as a. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I am not possible. Also, in simultaneous equations. Yeah. I mean, simultaneous, you are talking about this kind of a thing, right? B1 x plus uh, B is yes, equal to, huh? The first problem. Oh, first problem. Ah, first problem. Yes, possibly, yeah. Possibly. Your first problem is, you know, complexified by Narayana Pandita even more, you know. Yeah, yeah. But not matrix, but maybe, you know, it can be. Yeah. Thank you.